Oh my god. Oh shit, okay, here we go. Like, I ain't never been with a body, with a body. She calm, so I added to the tally. Madison Barton calling her Maddie. Yes. Like, Mads try to send me the addict. There we go. Now you guys can hear, hopefully, me and also, hopefully, the same audio I've been listening to for the last five minutes. Ah, okay, okay. Oh my god. Oh, there were so many auto saves with this with this stuff. Oh, oh boy. Okay, I'm trying to think of where where we were. So we finished this. Oh wait, hold on. I had to show you guys something. So I didn't obviously um I finished the game. Obviously. I well I finished with Damien. However, there was a cute option that I got at the end that nobody got to see because I just kind of cut to the end of the credits. But look at this lovely image of our boy here. Look at this boy. Look at this, this. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Anyways, I love him. Yeah, I've been listening to Dream Daddy for a very long time now. Okay, so this is all part of the epilogue, which is after my date. So we want to load up Dad Book where we made this decision. Yeah, Vamp Daddy goodness, right? So happy. Hey, Katsy. Happy Monday, guys. Uh, we are back to the daddies. Back to Dem Daddies. Um, okay, so let's go, I guess... Did I spend? How much time did I spend on? Okay, this is the last time. I'm going to assume. I'm going. I don't know what what I'm assuming anymore. I'm going to assume that I will be able to go back to specifically this this thing this thing here, and we can do something. I don't know. God. It feels weird because it feels like I'm undoing my date, but that's not what I'm doing load Welcome. You've got that. Okay. 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 This is okay. So this <laughs> I'm aware that that sounded very chaotic and it's perfectly fine. Um but that's accurate. <laughs> we're going to go through and we're going to try to finish up some dates with a bunch of these beautiful boys. I, and then we'll see. We're going to go through the rest of our favorites. It's really what it is. Which includes Craig and Stranger Danger. And then we might see about some of the other storylines because I'm very curious. Uh, Damien was just priority, I think, at this point. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, one of them, which is not a priority at all. And that's perfectly fine. <laughs> some daddies are not for everybody. Anyways. How are you guys doing? How is your Monday? How are you feeling? How are we all dealing as we go through yet another week of a pandemic, of a panini, of a panorama? Oh, God. Although, H-Dog, you're making me low-key want dumplings. Also, uh, depending on H-Dog's comfort, we may, may get to see May's, what, 3.0? Is that what we're on now? There may be Maze 3.0 at the end of this stream. Plotting along through this pale chocolate. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, we're really putting the pain back in pain, aren't we? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I want dumplings now, too. I'm going to blame H-Dog. Hello, and welcome to my stream. If anybody is lurking and is not used to me, I talk about food for the majority of the stream. <laughs> Oh, my life. Oh, goodness. Yeah, no, it's all good. I, uh, it's all good. Don't worry. I feel that. I, I feel that. I understand that. It's okay. I just also know French. That's why. I always find it funny that pain and pain uh, are both spelled the exact same. Because one of them is, you know, painful. The other one's delicious. There's a noodle place down the street. I know. Is it noodle me? Is that the one you're talking about? Because don't get me wrong. I'm already obsessed. I have been obsessed with that place for a minute now. Uh, Noodle Me is uh, legit my obsession, um, which is perfectly fine. There, yeah, no, I, girl, I'm already there. I, I already am. Oh boy, and so, fun fact, I may decide, I may cheat and order in tonight. We'll see how I'm feeling after stream. Um, because I helped uh, take care of a coworker's dogs for a couple of days during the holiday break, 
Uh, to which today she sends me an Uber Eats gift card as a, like, thanks for taking care of the dog. So I was like, dope. And so Noodle Me is actually on Uber Eats, so I might do that. H-Dog, <laughs> uh, always influencing what I, I, right? Thank you. Also, yeah, but no, I do not plan on walking. I briefly ducked my head outside, and that was the extent of it. Um, but yes, so... I think it's a good plan. But the noodle place is amazing. It's it, I quite love that one. Their chow mein is delightful, delectable. Um, but yeah, anyways. How are you guys doing, though? How is everybody feeling? Katsy is work trying to kill you. Jem is work trying to kill you. Everybody is work trying to kill you. Because I'm starting to realize that is the audience right now. The air hurt my face. Why do I live? I feel like that's a regular question, H Dog. Why do we ever live in a place where our air hurts our where the air hurts our face? Um Oh my life. Alright. So I think, yeah, that'll be that'll be the plan. <laughs> Not kill, but they're gonna make me murder. <laughs> Sounds good, Alex. Oh goodness gracious me. Um I think I actually made an exclamation point lurk. I gotta test that at some point. I put a bunch of new commands in. I haven't tested any of them though, and I really should. Uh, pro tip, test anything you actually do. Don't just wing it like I do. Uh, cause that's normally you regret that later. Um, I'm sure I'll regret many things later. Oh no, it puts it as me. Heck. Okay, so this is why you don't, that's why I gotta test this. <laughs> that has still not been set up. I will one day. I keep forgetting about that one. I will set it up. I gotta figure out... Okay, yeah. Thank you for testing that for me, Gem. I will fix that one later. Um, thank you, Stream Elements. My god. Anyways, let's... We're gonna get into... We're gonna finish out Craig and Stranger Danger, Robert. Maybe one more, depending on if it goes... How quickly these guys go. And then we'll get into Maze 3.0. Uh, the newer, faster, stronger, hotter version of the maze that H Dog has delightfully put together because she enjoys challenges in her life and enjoys testing the limits of our friendship. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of testing limits, let's date Craig. Yeah, save and continue. <laughs> It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. If you're parking uphill, be sure to turn your tires toward the street. Not a bad suggestion. Oh my life. Oh my lordy. The start of the end. Oh goodness. That worries me, H Doc. <laughs> Took some time for a schedule to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. Because oh god, that sounds like a bad idea for me, not Craig, me. He just stays so busy with work and kids, but it's good to know that we'll just be able to spend some time relaxing together in nature like the bros do. Maybe we got smoochie though. We'll see. Today, today is all about damn smoochies. We got one smoochie last time. Actually, I think we got a few smoochies out of Damien by the end of it. But this time, just you wait. And the nice part is we can finally utilize this fast forward button as we get through the epilogue because we've already been through the epilogue. Anyways. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like the only time we get to hang out. But the added benefit is that I've seen a lot of improvement in my health. I was able to sift through the attic and find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of the food. I feel like we should have reversed this role, but that's okay. It's a little too late now. I may as be spending this weekend on a school trip to our nation's capital. She hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since she was 14, and this feels very weird considering we're still in a pandemic, so the idea of traveling anywhere is beyond me. Hey, Manda Panda. And she is doing what I normally do with my luggage bag, which is sit on top of it until it actually finally closes. Mm. Hey, Pops. Are we ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? Seems a lot for two days. Uh, you'd be surprised, sir. Oh, it's all my camera equipment. Lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even gonna have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on National Monuments. That's cool. Ooh, what's the series about? About National Monuments, Dad. Come on. It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. 
<laughs> what? I'm kidding. Oh, that could have been funny. Portraits of my friend. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, well, I'm gonna be in the woods. Out there in nature, you know? Roughing it. Just me, and Mother Nature, and Craig. Can we all run your own? Yep. I'm not gonna be signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. So if any emergencies happen, call Damien. <laughs> Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who just got voted off of International Haunted House Hunters. Well, um, who gets voted off on International Haunted House Hunters? That doesn't sound like a competition reality show. For the record, Bradley put, was pushed down a flight of ornate stairs by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. Anyways. Relax, Datron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Doesn't sound too bad. Don't steal anything, okay? That sounds like advice I would give. Since you asked nicely, fine, I promise. Craig! My dude! Craig's already strapped some camping gear on top of my modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment. And thank God saves me from myself. Uh, such a gentleman. I almost had a case of the vapors in there. Yes! Starting off strong with eggplants. Let's keep this up. I feel like I've made dating sims competitive, at least with myself and I guess whoever it is I'm trying to woo. Maybe that's why I'm single. <laughs> Thanks, Age Toxie. I reset it. I learned this time. Um, I guess I can't argue with that. Everything good with Amanda? Yup. She running away for the weekend. What about your offspring? Alright, it's Smashley's for the weekend. I'm going to get my camp on. I forgot that it was Smashley that he, like, had kids with. Okay. Let's go. Oh, no. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just I try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away all of your troubles and worries. Blend them into pulpy good vibes. It's definitely a good motivation speech. Uh, anything to listen to? Uh, all I have in my place is a series of CDs that guide you th through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. Do you want to work to listen to those? No, I'm just kidding. Take your pick. Ooh. <laughs> After a page, I, what are you talking about? I want to listen to the kids sing along CDs. This is now a karaoke drive, sir. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. Did he make me a mixtape? DJ Kickstand's Mega Mix Volume 1. Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it very romantic of you, Craig. I was gonna say, I can't, it's been a while since somebody's made me a mixtape. I don't think anybody's ever made me a mixtape. The closest I think was H-Dog went and I went on a road trip one time and she made a bunch of mixtapes for said trip. And by mixtapes, I mean like CDs. Um, of which I think were categorized by K-pop, musicals, and something else altogether. It was, it was fun. It was special. This Carl, this song was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third roommate! You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you two apart. T-Swift, yes, that was it. I just remember you, Welcome to New York was on it because we had to, we had to play that as we drove into New York. It was great. I still remember that moment. I also still remember the moments where we sang the entire national anthem on the way home. Hi, Eric! <laughs> Oh, how's it going, buddy? Timing is important. It's true. You're not wrong. How's it going, Eric? We had a roommate. Piara is so suspicious of us, but could never prove anything. Oh, yeah! It is your birthday today! Happy birthday! Why did I think it was the 11th? I don't know why. Happy birthday! And you're here. Why are you here for your birthday? Not that I'm not saying, like, I was more, I'm more excited for more daddy time. Ah, I see. I see. You're here for the daddies. 
Oh, goodness. But yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> True. In the in this, I don't know. I like calling it a pan of chocolate after Alex did. Uh, in this in this panorama, in this Panda Express, I know. There's n there is nothing else I know. But I'm glad you're here. We're going. We're, we're dating Daddy Craig, Sports Daddy, and then we're gonna do Stranger Danger Daddy, and then we're gonna see what time we have, cause we're gonna we're gonna see about doing. Got a maze. We got a Stardew maze that we're gonna go through. Because H Dog likes to test the limits of our friendship. Yeah, we're going camping with Craig. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. Back in college. We still do dumb things, sir. Hours for hours? How far are we driving for this campsite, sir? Hours fly by as we belt out tunes, whatever non existent key our voices register, and soon enough we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. Feels good to be back out here. Real good. Alright. Okay. Park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful we've been working on my health over the last couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen and pretty much be mourning the loss of my own life here. What you doing, buddy? Yep, just had to fire off one last work email. <laughs> Sounds like me just before the stream. I was like, my computer is closed. Let's deal with this in the morning. Also, is what I'm saying not making any sense? I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just because I did it on my phone. Welcome back, Alex. We haven't gotten very far. We're in the woods. That's as good as we've gotten. Craig pockets the phone and we start off on a trail. It's relatively easy and I am not dying yet, but I would be huffing and puffing if it weren't for all the murder sprints. Take a look around me and take in all the trees and animal chirps. Everything okay back there? There's no reception out here. Well, yeah, no, duh. Oh, buddy, are you gonna be okay? What if there's a problem? I'm just pitching tents with the bro in the woods. You know, real boot stuff, yep. We become, we're good bros, we're best bros. Our bro relationship will only get stronger from here. What if there's a problem? You, you, you've trained for this day. Look, Craig, we all know that if you really wanted to, you could flex your calf muscles and fly out of here like a rocket ship all the way back to Maple Bay. And we will be staring at your sweet booty the entire way, let me tell you. You're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. This is our weekend. The kids will live. You don't seem reassured by this, sir. Maybe we should go back. We can find another campground that gets good cell reception. Craig, what's going on? I mean, I'm just, I'm really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in. He keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst say, case bronarios. What if something happens to the girls and I don't have single signal? I would have no way of knowing. Buddy, feeling never goes away, no matter how much older your kids are. So I mean, my dad still worry. My dad actually would still worry about me. Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, there's a reason that, like, the last time I traveled, my dad was the person to pick me up, pick me up from the airport, and also drop me off at the airport, regardless of what stupid times I did them at. Um, da dad's, and I like, I'm thirty something. My dad has never stopped worrying. So yeah, actual factual thing. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring shoulder punch. Because, you know, bros do that. We are reassured by violence. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus on ourselves for this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads being dads, being bros, and spending some time together. Craig looks at me directly, directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just you and me. And your butt in those sweatpants. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun this weekend. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite. We're both glad to see we're the only people there. Can't believe you still have this tent. That's not reassuring. Found my attic and already checked it for holes. Thank God. Because that would have been my first uh, my first issue here. It's seen better days for sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. Dump the bag of fabric and poles on the ground and we somehow pitch a tent. 
hopefully, anyways. <laughs> I may be getting ahead of us. We still know how to do this, right? No, we do not. We are going to end up going back to the car and sleeping in it. <laughs> Call it. We don't know what we're doing in the slightest. Oh my god, after 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you had asked somebody to draw a picture of one and their eyes were shut. I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. <laughs> the night! This was supposed to be a weekend trip. Oh, Bro, look at us go! Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews, for we hold dominion. Over this land. Oh. Verily, and uh, look at our camping thrones. They are camping thrones, Craig. So what's up next on our cap, a camp extravaganza docket? Jesus. Well, now that we've shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a little, there's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to, and hopefully not fall into. I I am of the assumption that we will die on this trip. Like, there is no epilogue after the date with Craig. We just end up dying. Skinny dipping! <laughs> Probably. I would not put it past Craig. I think he is eventually going to relax and live out his college days, which means that is likely. Oh, lordy. That, that would be Eric's ultimate birthday gift. <laughs> is this game going in that direction? <laughs> Oh, uh, Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along. Cabin in the woods. Ooh, because that's in my head now. Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude. Does that look like what I... Does that look like what I think it looks like? It looks like a giant penis? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Suggestion. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> butt tree. Da -na 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 butt tree. Yay! Chuck! I'm so glad that you are here and not banned. <laughs> oh, age dog. You're the best. <laughs> oh, God. Congrats. I can't get over how detailed it is. A detailed butt tree. Contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. Thought we are gonna have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Oh my God, all the booty jokes. Oh. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Let us analyze this tree further. Analyze. Analyze sounds so weird. <laughs> oh, these are the worst. Best thing about this is there are no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. No, instead, a daughter is playing your game and telling you these jokes are bad. Oh. We high five. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. These jokes are delightful out there. Happy birthday, Eric. You get booty. Jokes. You get booty jokes. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear water running. <gasps> That's so pretty. Cresting over hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us, beautiful waterfall spilling out into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty of the place we go to investigate. Oh, thanks, age dog. The old nice. waterfall. But now I have plenty of water to quench my thirst. I have only a little bit of water here. I screwed up. Oh, past me. Made a mistake. Nature's so rad. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we can jump off of it like the old days? We're going to break a limb! Haha, <laughs> this old dad is happier on dry land. Looks like you climb right up over there. You didn't even bring swimming trucks. Uh, what are you talking about? We should have made this into like a bingo card because whoever had skinny. Al I think Alex, were you the one? Yeah, Alex called this already. 
Uh, you can knock off skinny dipping on your bingo card uh, for Dream Daddy. <laughs> oh, damn. I mean, I'm not surprised, but also. Oh, we are... Guys, there is no way we're not looking at Craig's butt. I don't care. There is no way we are not. Look at the booty. I can't help but sneak a peek. That. That is a good booty. Apparently, third date with Craig is just all booties all the time. That's all this is. Okay, but h Dog, would you have chosen a different answer in this case? I think not. Oh, my life. That is a good booty. Booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Craig turns around suddenly. He catches me looking. <laughs> h Dog. Do a lot of glute workouts. But I'm winning. Oh. Coming in or what? Mm, I don't know about this dude we know. Go. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. <laughs> we lived together for years and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. Have I seen your ass more times? Actually, no. This is probably a very different bod than Keg Stan Craig. I had to make sure that was the right name for a second there. Um, who needs pants anyways? They're overrated. Although, we could, nope, nope. Not that kind of stream. Not that kind of stream, Parker. Let's calm down. There's society suppressors. Down with bands, down with the system. That's the spirit. Take off my shirt and drop in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig, Craig and I climb up to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff and into the tiny lake. This is where we break our necks, people. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some studs in college, and I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing in the sidelines watching and hoping I wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, man this could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Don't think, just jump. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from the water. <laughs> okay, he survived. I'm still concerned about me. Huh? Coming or what? Don't think, just jump. Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to not think? Pretty sure you have to do that. Toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think. Just I run off the edge trying to do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle turns into a really graceful belly flop. Oh, no. My stomach hurts just thinking of that. I hit the water with a loud slap. Oh, no. Oh. I resurface to find Craig giggling. I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place, sir. <laughs> about that I splash him again oh. you've given me no choice <gasps> uh, you've awakened the beast oh good excellent this is exactly what we wanted don't you put me in a corner here don't put a wild animal in the corner nobody puts baby in the corner <laughs> oh no Ham what, what does he mean by hammer fist like oh like in the water okay or do we dunk him? I think we're going... I th feel like roughhousing is maybe the way to go. Feel like... Let's dunk him. I lunch for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. Use all my dad's strength to lift Craig out of the water. Hey! And I drop him down for the splash. Craig bounces back out of the water. My turn. Oh no! Oh no! This is this is trouble. I am in trouble. Oh god. Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with clearly superior muscles, dur, and quite literally tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I could look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These arm cannons are dad launchers. <laughs> How often? Okay. We have brought ruin upon ourselves. Yes, we have. We we made a mistake. Um, 
But also, how often do you go about launching dads across the water, sir? Like, can you please answer that question for me? I have so many questions, but mostly that one. Nailing this one. Uh, flex, daddy, flex. Anyways. <laughs> Craig, truce, please. He thinks about it. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There's peace. Man, that jump, jump is such an adrenaline rush. Enemy death. <laughs> Thirsty five times. We are 30 minutes in on this stream. <laughs> that is going to hit a scary amount by the end of this at this going rate. Oh, not so scary now, huh? I'll race it to the top. Run all the way up the slick rocks and cannonball off the waterfall again without breaking anything too much of our surprise. Good form on that one. Want to go again? Let's go. The same energy we have. We're gonna feel this tomorrow. We're gonna feel this. <laughs> terrible. Eric, that's terrible. <sighs> oh, goodness. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm pretty sure looks incredibly graceful as I bl belly flop into the water. <sighs> Man, this is fun. Got one more in you? I live for danger. I also live because I expect to die any minute now. <laughs> oh my god. Takes us a little more time but we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get back going before it gets too dark. Yeah, you're right. We should probably head back. Go to put our clothes back on and notice they're soaking wet. Oh, that splash fight was a bad idea. Oh, that's okay. We'll get a fire going in no time. And dry off and get some dinner going. Did you not bring spare clothes? Are you just wearing the same thing for however many days you're out here? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we can easily figure out the number for Eric there. Sopping wet, we hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tinfoil. Mm -hmm. You ready for a feast? Hey, man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into Relaxation Station, and I'm your conductor. Pew, pew, pew. Let me cook for you. I won't poison you, I promise. But I can't promise it's going to taste good. Actually, that's a lie. I can, I can do most cooking. Absolutely not. <laughs> cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now? I remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved, and have trouble believing the thing he just said. <laughs> oh, God. Average rate of thirst. Yes. Terrible. Let me at least start the fire. Sure. Let me just grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. Rummages around, pulling strings, pulling things out and checking every pocket. I don't know. I know I packed it. My stomach grumbles, and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I, could, I swear I could have packed it. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We are smart, reasonable, attractive men. How hard can it be? We watch plenty of survival programs on TV. Um, sir, I don't think what we've watched... Oh my god, h dog. I don't think what we've watched would really constitute as actual survival shows, but sure. We'll need some wood. I'm gesture to the trees around oh, us. Man. There's no shortage of that. Oh. And some tinder. We can make that work. And I think some ancient aliens that are supposed to come by and give us advanced technology. Or renovate our house. Depends on the show. Yep, that's what concerns me. Conceptually make a passable looking oh. campfire. Just add fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is now setting and a cool breeze rustles the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Oh. Anyway, I can help? Give me some more water sport. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Okay. <laughs> Never knew a better Craig. You can do it! Go overboard with compliments. That might overdo it. I don't know. Do I go overboard with it? Is he? Oh. Do I go overboard? Do I just give you all of the compliments, my dude? I feel like never knew a better Craig is kind of a low blow. You can do what seems pretty standard. That just feels like a weird one. 
I know, I know. I'm overthinking this. You can do it! Clear eyes. Full heart. Can't uh, not make that fire. You can make that fire, Craig. That's the stuff. Yeah! Okay. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough, we have a nice little fire going. Way to go, man! For the regular old outdoorsy fellas. Hooray for not dying! I love that. Oh, goodness. Alex, man, take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I love this. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. Which is probably quite delightful. Expertly sears two steaks in a pan he's been heating up on the fire. Cracking thyme and crushed, crushed ginger. Why are you putting ginger in this? That feels a little strange. Garlic would make sense, but... Wow. Didn't know he was actually good at cooking. Fanciest I ever saw him get in with college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet onto dry ramen and eating it straight up. It sounds like he never cooked anything. He just ate everything raw. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal over cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Go figure. Start to reach for him, but Craig smacks my hand away. Dude, we'll let them rest. It'll be more flavorful that way. Oh, what a good man. He knows you need to rest a steak. Love you. Love this. Sit patiently as we are steak gremlins and we wish our foods. Anyways, um, it's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Craig prepares a side salad. Oh, God. Sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens. Damn. He came really prepared for this meal. Generously pile, generous pile of roasted potatoes. Potatoes! Potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. Yum, yum, yum. Once it's already, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Mm. Everything tastes okay? I'm in heaven. New friend alert! <laughs> Cute as a button, girl. I love that name. Oh my god. Welcome! Welcome to... I don't even know what this is. It's Dream Daddy, but also... It's a little weird because Craig is shirtless right now. I know how this looks, but it's 100% what it looks like. Um, he clearly has been getting lessons from Stranger Danger. Uh, cute as button, welcome to the chat. Uh, it'll take 10 minutes before you're able to actually engage in chat because I have that kind of limit on my thing. You know how it goes, I think. I hope. Anyways, hi, welcome. Yes, I just keep being thirsty. <laughs> what do you want from my life, H. <laughs> oh, it's okay though. Um, oh. that's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? That sounds delightful. I don't see actually a problem with that. Uh -huh. It's so hard not to go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now like you cook, and now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microbial food. Really impressed with uh, how you've gotten your life together, sir. I I am also personally actually quite impressed because I feel like, actually no, I think your college days were like easily over a decade ago, especially if Amanda's eighteen. Um. But still, this is impressive. Like, I'm proud of you, dude. Craig laughs so there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. Oh. Oh, are you... You don't like your lifestyle. You don't like healthy fit life. Oh, no. He does not like the good life. I glance at Craig while he picks out his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem much older than he is. A sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks, he looks exhausted because he has twin girls and a baby. And he's a single dad and does all these things. I kind of don't blame him. Kind of like how we're all exhausted because we live in a panini still. You okay? Yeah. Tell me the truth, sir. Tell me more. Come on, dude. I've known you long enough to see when you're down. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. Yeah, that also explained the neuroses about not having uh, any cell phone reception for a hot minute. <laughs> Good old living in a pain chocolat. <laughs> Man, that makes it sound so much better than it actually is, though. Oh, I love chocolate croissants. They make me so happy. Anyways. Must be a bit. Yeah, no. You, you would think that uh, he would put on a shirt, but apparently no. His, his abs keep him warm at night. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be oh, easy. Man. 
I have to, for my girls. I volunteer at their school, I cook healthy meals for them, I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. Like, holy hell, kid. You're doing amazing as a dad. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. I mean, that's why I work out. I don't know what you want for my life. <laughs> H-Dog, I like that you tried to make it thirsty, Eric, but really it just called me out further. <laughs> it felt like a twofer right there. Thank you. <laughs> Huh, then I don't want to fall in my own old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them and I wouldn't have it any other way. Except you need self-care, sir. We need, okay, what is it? What is it about most of these dads who just need to learn how to take care of themselves? You are in dire need of like queer eye coming in and like ship shape in your life. So that way you take care of yourself as well. That is the important self part here. Because yes, it seems like you're bleeding yourself dry. Take care of yourself. Nice. That's what it takes to raise them all. Not if you died you're doing it, dude. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself too. Mm. I do though. I eat no, 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 sir. It's not what I mean. You're too little butter on too much toast. You know, you're spread too mm. thin. What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but. You can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. I'm so glad that, like, my person, like, who I am playing, my avatar in this game, is, like, as strongly passionate as I am, obviously, about this. Like, because I 100% believe this. I, I completely... This is, this is how I am. I used to be that person that was like, no, I need to take care of everybody else, and then I died. So, I didn't actually... <laughs> But I basically felt like I was dying, and it's not good. It's not sustainable. And you can't pour from an empty cup, and that's the biggest thing. Oh. Yeah, this is... I am secretly a ghost, right? Now. I mean, I'm pale enough. It almost seems like it. Uh, now it's just a ghost Parker who is, like, here playing games and doing things with the all. It's fine. I just... I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. Look out for those paranormal dog ice truckers. <laughs> it makes the highways real dangerous, okay? Especially in winter. Especially in these Canadian winters. I don't know. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I, feel, I even feel guilty about being out here. You need to work on this. This is why you and I should date. I will force you to take time for yourself. Craig, you're trying your best, and you're just doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. Not wrong. Oh. Do I, though? Yes, you do! Oh, my life! Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Go on, we're adding the bro. <laughs> We're doing amazing on the eggplant answers today. Just saying, like, knock on wood that they keep up, but I'm doing real good. Real, real good at this. <laughs> I look at Craig and he's, and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. Ain't that wrong. He's compassionate, hardworking, relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. Mm, this is precious. If you can only see yourself the way I see oh. you. Also, the fact that, like, I have the um, capacity to have these very heartfelt, deep conversation while the man is still rondering around without a shirt on. True inner strength. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. I brought dessert. Good boy. What would you bring us? Cake? Pie? Oh, you're going to use a campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? Oh. What? I know little to nothing about cooking. <laughs> This is why we were not in charge of the food. <laughs> well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? <sighs> I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely blacken the marshmallows. Okay, but how we not learned that he is capable of everything now? This man, this man, this, this gentleman here, this 
beautiful human knows what he's doing. Oh. oh, I stand by that. It's tried on the outside, but Gooey Center is preserved. Brutish. <laughs> oh, he throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. That is a skill. Pro move, yes. You're supposed to do that at great distance against a wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice. I'm competitive again. We are very competitive, I learned. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire as Craig still refuses to put on a shirt. For some reason, one would think that would have been dangerous when he was searing those steaks earlier, but no. No, not at all for Craig, apparently. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah, because you don't have, like, pollution and smog blocking the way. Hmm. Yeah, I miss this. Me too. Stay here until it gets late. Half remembering stories from college. This is adorable. Just keep gossiping until 3 a.m., but, you know, just throw things. And then we go and we cuddle. We cuddle, right? We better be cuddling. Cuddle. Crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag because I was an idiot and did not actually do that earlier. We probably should have because it's so much harder to navigate afterwards. Wait, where's the... Everybody else see where this is going? Everybody else see where we're going here? With this one? Oh, my life. Where's the other sleeping bag? Oh, it, we go on snuggle buddies right now. Oh my god, if Brian showed up to do a freaking marshmallow catching competition, I swear, I, I would just and walk out probably. I don't know if I could handle that, okay? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's looking like snuggle buddy time. Those sleeping bags are not big. And Craig's got, like, good muscular shoulders on him. This is not going to go well. And that booty. I don't know how that's going to happen. I look around for a second. Oh. Oh, no. I screwed up. It's all yours, dude. I'm so sorry. I'll just curl up over here. No way. Here. Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Oh, hello! Yay! How are you? Welcome. We're about, to, I'm, I think, I think I mentioned in the TikTok, but I'm in Ontario. I'm in Toronto. It's suffering through lockdown 247. <laughs> night, bro. Good night, bro. <laughs> Roll over and face, we face away from each other. Oh, oh, that's not, we're not standing for that. We're not standing for that. Oh my goodness. But yeah, welcome cute as button. I'm doing good. Uh, dream daddy stuff. Dream daddy times where we just, we want, we just want to smooch all the boys. Hmm. But yeah, welcome. Enjoy. I don't know. I got nothing. I don't have a welcome package. I should figure that out. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's all goose. It's all good times. We're gonna start cuddling. We are waiting. We're gonna get cuddles going. I shiver without realizing it. I find myself nestled closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. Oh, Northwestern Ontario. Very, very nice. My brain went NW and thought Northwest, but I'm like, that's an O. That's not a T. That's not Northwest Territories. Although that would be impressive as heck. Ugh. Bam. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm Toronto region. Yeah, there we go. But we got people from all over here. We got some other fellow Canadians. We have some other, got some lovely UK folks. We got some lovely American friends. Which is great, because then we just sit around and we start comparing how bad the panini is for everybody. Because <laughs> it's pretty terrible. Ah! Ah, but yay! We're gonna cuddle with Craig. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once he looks at peace, thank God. Where is this going? Ew, oh no, negative 40, oh. Oh, that's so much worse than any of us had it. We were complaining about negative 10 earlier today when I was working. Oh, honey. Ooh. No bueno, no bueno. Ugh. It's cold, Canada's so cold. Outside hurts our faces. All right, Craig, we're speaking about how cold it is. You should keep us warm, buddy. 
I'm not sure who leans in first, but suddenly we smoochin. Since when? That was fast. Right, we, we, we're not going to cuddles, we're just skipping straight to smoochies. We went to smooch central here. We look again at each other, my heart racing. Craig. I don't know. I've got strong feelings for you, bro. Can't deny them anymore. This is normal. <laughs> User barbecue as a freezer. Bro, me too. <laughs> this is such a cute promise. <laughs> this is adorable. Bro, I got feelings for you, bro. Bro, me too. Oh my god. This is getting spicy. We getting spicy out in the woods here. Run my hands through his hair and down to his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I finally feel warm because we were freezing in this tent. <laughs> You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. Mm. Me too, bro. Me too. Smooch town population. This tent. This tent is now Smooch town. I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. Whoa, we are going way into this one. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. Nope. We just getting, we getting spicy in the woods, folks. We just, yeah, oh my god. Get that booty. Th that's the true win of this game, is getting Craig's booty, okay? Yeah, the better be. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Oh my god. All right, so as we learned on Friday, fr Thursday, yeah, look at them booties. All damn booties. That, I love the little cart corgi butt. That's amazing. That's so good. Oh, uh, so much booty. Love Craig's booty. Anyway, <laughs> as we learned on Friday, this will go into the epilogue, most of which I think we've seen, but I'm probably going to, so I'm going to be skipping through a fair bit of it. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, but I am, however, going to slow down once it hits, like, closer to the end and we see, like, Craig's actual, woo, his, I want to see his photo. We get a photo. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Okay. Oh yeah, I answered sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. Okay, I can hold that. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, this is a it's an entertaining community. <laughs> Strange is definitely one way to go with it. <laughs> H-Dog is the troublemaking mod. Alex is the nice, sensible, reasonable mod who also causes trouble. Um, I can't say he doesn't. I feel like he does. I just don't always see it. <laughs> I lead a man. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah, no, we give her... Okay. Yeah, we're going to the backyard. There's a surprise party. Uh, I don't do anything. You can't prove it. <laughs> oh, no, because Damien... <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually probably shouldn't say anything about H-Dog. She... We might be going into a maze later in Stardew. Because H-Dog likes to build mazes. It's fun. Um, in which case, you're just going to hear me curse. A lot. But we're going to go through some nice, happy, smoochy times first. Gonna assuage my my myself. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm doing. Also, I was just gonna say I'm so sad he's back. Like I love Victorian Damien wear, but it's so cute because when you romance him, he's got his civvies on, so he's got his like super nerdy tech tech look work, and it's amazing. Oh. Anyways. Okay, we got your graduation party, a full mac and cheese bar. Oh. Give him this a hot second, because my internet's being silly. There we go. There we go. Now we're back to green. Okay. T-shirt stuff. My mortal enemy, Brian. Hello, teacher dad. I do like that they still have the noises as I fast forward through this. Oh. 
No, I'm on Tech Savvy, actually, for internet. Which uh, goes through Rogers, I think, actually. Like, it uses Rogers' power lines, and, like, lines, rather, in the end. But, anyways, I'm still, like, swooning over Damien, don't mind me. I love him. The, this will be new. This will be different, because we didn't... He was my last one at the end. All right. Oh, it's just a hey. That's so weird. We'll get it next time. Oh, weird. Mm. <laughs> I've had 11 times. We're not even at an hour into this. Oh, my God. Oh, hmm. my God. They're trying for psychic stuff. Because they already expect... You didn't finish your sentence. What are we going to be finishing? Each yeah. other's sentences. See, third twin. I have to go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. As party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Craig. Sun is setting and everyone seems to be in their fill. Bro. Bro. Are we just gonna keep calling each other bro for this entire relationship? <laughs> this reminds me of the parties we used to throw. You were keg stands, of course. We could fix that. Do you wanna throw it? Do you wanna do a keg stand? Probably for the best. I don't wanna get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. We can leave keg stands in the past. Oh my god. You doing okay? Yeah, dude. I'm alright. I just can't hang for too long. I gotta get back and answer some emails. No! You're mine now. What happened to relaxing? I am relaxing right now. We're sitting on a bench. Yeah, well, I could be standing. Hmm. Sir, that does not count as relaxing. Craig, you gotta take better care of yourself. I care about you and I want you to be okay. Hmm. I appreciate it, but I'm fine. Now what? I'm just a friend. How dare. We have spent a weekend together in the woods. A good friend, yes. I will not actually stand for this lack of relaxing. I, I, this boy needs better. Do you ever, do you ever wish that maybe for more than that? <gasps> I feel very proud of ourselves for taking that step and asking. I feel like normally we wouldn't have. Oh, bro. I think I'm about to get my heart broken. I'm sorry if I gave off that impression. To be honest, I kind of wondered the same thing. Wait, no, there's a problem here. What's the problem though, sir? I don't think I have time for that right now. I think we're better off as fr- Oh. Yeah, I can do friends. Excuse me, I'm gonna cry. Oh. All right, buddy, I gotta get moving. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Oof. Oh, guys, I'm gonna go back to Damien. I don't want to deal with these feels. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party pops. Yeah, except for my broken heart. What can I say? I was inspired. So, oh yeah, I also have something for you. Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. I've been through this part. I am still getting over the broken heart of Craig right now. Hmm. Vamp Daddy would never do me wrong like this. And I'm wondering if the other daddies will too. Oh, now knowing that I can experience heartbreak, is it because I didn't do perfectly on some of those dates? I don't know. Don't cry, don't cry, we're already gonna cry. You're the best dad, I love you. And I'm crying, and not because of Craig. <laughs> I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Amanda, thank you. You're a wonderful child and I adore you. It's only the beginning. Uh. Memories to make and stuff to break, yeah! I love it. It would be my honor. Man and I wave as bye to the partygoers as they leave. I'm glad you made some friends. <laughs> One of them was supposed to be more than friends. Hmm. <laughs> I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. Yeah, thank God. You're right. Oh, 
It's gonna be hard at first. Going back to Vamp Daddy, I am not okay. Craig, I thought... <sighs> this is the next chapter in our story, and I'd be nervous about it, but I know you're always going to be... I know, I, I keep expecting him to, like, jump in and, like, be there secretly and be like, never mind, you know what, I can make time for you. And, like, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Team Wallace. Oh yeah. I don't blame him. Because he is very busy. But also, that's exceptionally sad. Um, oh, my heart. Yeah, where's the TikTok? Emotional damage. Uh, what do you mean I'm friend zone myself? Okay, by the way, this is the photo that you guys didn't get to see because I didn't go to the end of this stuff afterwards. Did I actually like screw up that one? With, because otherwise I'm very scared to go do Matt. Oh, okay, we're gonna go Stranger Danger. I don't have a photo. So I did just genuinely screw up with Craig. I might need to redo this entire game. It's fine. It's gonna be perfectly fine. I think if your dates don't reach a certain threshold, you get friend zoned. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Heck. Okay, so I know I said I was probably gonna be done with Dream Daddy after today, but that might be a lie. Um, I may not do all of my streams as Dream Daddy, but we might like... The competitive completionist side of me is now like, okay, what if I like start a new game and I just zero in on like Craig and perfecting Craig? That sounds really weird. We'll see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see, but like, I'm just like, I'm broken hearted. Okay, Robert, Robert, you need to unbreak my heart, please. Uh, say you'll love me again. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you knew I was good. That is literally, those lyrics are literally me right now. I am not. <sighs> that or it's just, apparently Damien was only ever meant to be the one for me. It's fine. It's because I had that one bad date with him. I mean, actually, no, that's a lie. It was the first one too. Now that I think of it, the first date, I think I only got like a B. And then I think my third date, I also only got like a B or an A. I've only had like one ass level date with him. Ugh. I'm just regretting all of my choices now. Well, not all of my choices. Vamp Daddy was perfection and we love him to pieces. So we're gonna see how this one goes. I don't know. What? What? Hi. I'm like obsessing over a fictional character. What do you want from my life? That happens always. Don't keep, what's that face for? I will fix it with him. I will make it right. Possibly not with everybody, maybe just Craig. <laughs> We're gonna see how this guy goes, though. Oh, my heart hurts. We're not okay with this, guys. You weren't wrong when I, like, I know, I feel like last week you're like, oh no, you need to go restart the game to fix this. You weren't wrong. It's fine. Make a new daddy. He's gonna love the newer daddy. It's fine. Anyways. We're doing just fine. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually so somber then. Like, more so than usual amount of somber that Robert is. Which is already like a lot. I'm thinking about him. I hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. Nobody's okay. What do you want from me? Parker. Hey Parker. Guess who? Sir? Are you drunk texting me? Oh. Also me, but mostly you. Yeah, dude, let's go. Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. <laughs> Not that I'm unappreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. <laughs> that means he really likes us, I think. If he's actually giving me notice, like, that's that's a huge step in our relationship. Oh my god, help me. Amanda. Amanda pops her head in the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from her room. What's up? Hanging with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friends. 
I have friends. I definitely have friends. Friends, friends, friendly friends. Time to meet my friends. Here is Robert. That's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, my brain lives in TikTok audio, so that's not good. Ugh. Dad, I'm so happy for you. Continue development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. What would Grandma think? Well, I don't think she cares for the Smiths that much, but I figure if we start her off on meat as murder, she eat her, he's her way into it. No, honey, the language. Oh, she'd hate that. Just promise me you'll lighten up a bit for Grandma. Do it for Grandma. Oh, Amanda. I put on my going out coat and probably my going out pants as well. Hopefully, otherwise this is very similar to my last date. Uh, I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize that he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. Did he clean up for me? It actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Robert. This is... Are you making an effort for me, Robert? Hey. Hey. Did you just take a shower for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. This is progress. This is progress. This is beautiful, beautiful progress. I'm so proud of you. You both stand here for, there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes his cigarette and goes abruptly inside. That said, though, next step is smoking. Where I want you to not get lung cancer. I would lot like to also get lung cancer. So we're going to work on the smoking thing, okay? That's the next little life improvement. We'll get baby steps, though. Baby steps. You know what? The shower and cleaning up is a good one. By the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar, ordering us two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us, and he gives me my drink. I'm a toast to us. I'm being bold. Here's to us and all the property damage and petty larceny we may commit tonight. That was not eggplant. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I can still save this. Clink whiskeys and I watch him sip his rather traditional approach of, rather than his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So what's the plan for tonight? Get some other bars, maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill some time before we go burn down that abandoned old house in the woods. Yes, arson, love it, let's do this. It's definitely not fun, not as fun if it's abandoned. Hey. Mary, are you going to third wheel this date again? I love you, but also. Mary pops back over the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. There was my phone call. Sorry, I figured you're busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right here. Oh, there. She actually has somebody this time. Okay. Bouncing back there, Mary. I'm proud of you. You got a mess, buddy. You replacing me with a new kid? Hey, I am only, I'm, what was it? I'm the top nerd as opposed to Hugo Vega, who is the other nerd. At least I think. I can't remember your map, Mary. You label us all, though. I can never replace you, whether I wanted to or not. And she's joined us. We have saved the other guy, which was great. Yeah, it was nerd versus other nerd. I was at least the main nerd, though. It was an other nerd. I got promoted. That's because I take care of Damien. So she loves me when I do that. What? You got a court date coming up? I'm just getting hurt, sir! Court's offered me imp impunity if I would testify against him. I'm considering it. Seriously, though, what is up with you? Robert stares at down his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's... Pappy. Doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with the sauce, but it's all he's ever known, especially since Ma's gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just didn't want to be alone. Uh, oh, come on. Parker, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke about is his pappy. I don't know that! Whoops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. Robert, I'm so sorry. Why is... I thought... Today was going to be happy, sappy, smoochy time. That is what I expected. And yet all I'm getting right now is heartbreak hotel. That is, we are, we are, we have like 
grazed by Smooch Town, and apparently on the outskirts is Heartbreak Hotel, and we just seem to have a week-long stay. That was not what I signed up for tonight. I look at his life, and then I look at mine, and I know history is just doomed to read itself. No, it's not. Oh my god. I'm just kidding! He's retired with his new girlfriend in Alcapulco! They watch the sunset every night! Probably screw like donkeys. Sir, are you actually joking? I- wait. Aren't the rabbits who, ones who screw a lot? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you're an expert on which animals screw a lot. Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of his booth. Me and Parker's gonna hit the bricks. You coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting and downs the rest for wine in one gulp. This place is dead anyways. Uh, yeah, Heartbreak Hotel, Emotional Damage, Population, me. Also, Mary, why are you a third wheel? I just wanted alone time with stranger danger. We exit the bar and find the typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with really deliberate attitude and bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up all out of his face for a dramatic effect. I see. What's going on? Looks like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of town all the time. I'm a ghost. I could join. Let's go. I always wanted to do one of those. Mm. You know, all the stories are fake, right? Huh. Pretty much all my stories are fake. This is research. Mm. <laughs> he makes a beeline towards the back of the group, turns around, and notices that I'm not following him. Why am I not following him? I would be 100% in with this. We can't just crash it, can we? Don't be such a square, Parker. Just act like you belong. Have you not watched what, like, what is it? National Treasure? They go on the tour of the museum. You just pretend to be part of the tour group the entire time. Ask annoying questions. They're just going to assume you've always been there. Never mind. Regrets. I have so many regrets. I have so many regrets. We did not. He has been Spin Master Quinn. He has been Trivia Master Quinn. And now he is Tour Master Quinn. How many jobs does he have? Can't knock the hustle. But also, I did not prepare myself to be emotionally devastated by this man as well tonight. Hey, hey! It was in this place in 19... 1694 that most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we do not know if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it is widely reported that their ghosts still haunt this hapless dive bar to this very day. It was actually 1692. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. I'm sorry, who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually why I love Robert. Like, this is the shenanigans out of this guy. Could I actually handle it emotionally as a relationship? Probably not. Um, but also. Ooh. Ooh, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Let's go 80s reference. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. Eggplant answers. Anyways. Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. Returning America's most haunted locations is research for our new book. <gasps> that reminds me. Ghost Files should start soon. Sorry. I actually really... Okay, so I'm somebody who loves... Loves. Um, Unsolved. Especially Unsolved Supernatural. Uh, Ghoul Boys, what up, yo? I love them. I love Watcher. I love Watcher Entertainment. If you don't know about BuzzFeed Unsolved uh, Paranormal, go look it up. But the boys who did that, uh, Ryan Vergara and Shane Day, they have their own YouTube channel called We Are Watcher, well, Watcher Entertainment. And they are starting Ghost Files soon, I think this month, which is so exciting because it's basically them hunting ghosts. Anyways. I love it. I, I don't know what... I really am obsessed with anything those guys make. They're just really good comedic geniuses in my head anyways. To me. To me emotionally. But I love this. No. You may have seen our guest cameo on Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I... Are you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at the first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Oh. They've definitely been here. Been standing next to them the whole time. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Ah. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the coffee spoon over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by haunting since he signed the lease. Damn near driving him mad. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. 
Man, didn't know that about Matt. I don't know if Matt knows that about Matt. Wait, Robert's making this up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're now leading the tour, ladies and gents. I think the tour guide can tell he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. That's hey. fine. Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. That tour guide's shirt is cool. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Well, guess we're in this for the long haul, then. Just follow my lead, don't arouse too much suspicion, and we'll have all have cool ghost shirts in no time. All right. I love that we're cheating the system. This is so silly. Group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. Ha -ha! Quick pause in the tour. My name's Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master, part-time actor. I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. What? This feels like a weird time for you to hand out your resume, but okay. Hmm. Stage combat experience. Anyway, here's a little history for you all. This is the home of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of the Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of the consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people have reported that on some nights you can see a light from the attic where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues work on her latest bestseller. I guess you could say she was consumed by her work. That's a terrible joke. My feelings were hurt. No reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. This guy needs to work on his jokes, period. Actually, consumption was the popular cover-up, but I don't know, in fact, it was actually murder-suicide. Hey. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure, and we definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. That's watered-down, censored version they try to teach you in school. You can't handle the real story. I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Hey. Can we... I think everyone would much rather hear what this world-renowned ghost historian has to say. Right, everybody? Oh, my God. You're just amping up the crowd, Mary. I this so is... Sad. Sorry. Quinn's, like, random dialogue kills me because it's just, I am so sad. Oh, my life. It's a topic we cover extensively in our book, Dr. Loomis. Would you care to tell this story? If it's something I know, I'm, it's not going to work, I don't think. Because somebody's going to recognize it from a show. Hi, bro. Ah, yes. Though it's rarely covered in traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pemberton was caught in a fierce rivalry with local author, uh, author Arthur Livingston Price. Arthur's books were blatant rips off of Pembridge's work and consistently sold better. Pembridge was enraged by this and has confronted Livingston Price at his home with plans to end his life. The bitter feud surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate love affair. After, however, after many months of secret courtship, Pembridge, Pembridge <laughs> followed through with her original plan and poisoned Livingston Price in his sleep. Overcome with unexpected grief, Pembridge polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Reports say that couples who enter into this house will no doubt doom the relationship to a bitter end. Okay, it's not eggplants. Man, I should bring my wife here. The group, entire group, laughs heartedly. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding, my wife is dead. <gasps> bum, bum, bum! She was killed by a ghost. <gasps> I'm just messing with you guys. And now we've made them all uncomfortable. Good times. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and address us with some razzle dazzle. Oh, what an interesting story. Now, I just want everyone to know the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can't handle it, feel free to excuse yourselves. Bring it, buddy. All right, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid, fancy buying a gala drink? Guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think I could exercise your demons if that's what you're looking for. Hey. Don't write checks your dick can't cash, kid. Hmm. 
This is this is insane. Suddenly, she suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs in my ear. Wait, what? This is so weird. Mary, we don't hug. Thought we've been through this. I think you're about to stab me. When you've known Robert for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him tonight, okay? Got it. Good man. It's very interesting. She's very protective of, like, well, okay, only Robert and Damien. <laughs> so far, she's only protective. She's more protective of both Robert and Damien than I think she is of her own husband, which is why I want to finish Joseph's story. Ah. Take it so easy, fellas. Gotta help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Uh. Both? Both. Hey. Both is good. Last stop, this burial ground is such a hotbed for horrifying paranormal activity, I'm not even sure where to begin. Damien is actually the proper expert on this place, though, but I'm just gonna rip off whatever he would probably introduce us to and make it in a less Victorian fashion. There is the wailing ghost of the Wharfman, the vampire of Maple Bay. That's just Damien! The children of the moonlight, that's just, oh, that's, that's Mary's kids. You really should have gotten her here. What about the do- Yes, two for ghost comes back. By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated I with us. Sad. I am sad. Yes, you are, Quinn. Huh. What about it? For nothing. I just think it'd be a crime to come all this way out to the cemetery. The actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entries. Entities. And not even mention the infamous Dover ghost. It's not a real thing. That is absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. Oh. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Oh yeah, baby. Uh -huh. Would you folks care to tell, care to tell of how Luminous and I met? Hey. No, the entire group shushes the tour guide. I'm so sad. Fine, fine, tell the story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when? Hey. Traveling grifter. Easier story to sell. Yes! A plant answer! Moving from town to town, always looking for a max mark. Wasn't always an easy life, but I had fun taking from the rich, giving to the poor. Actually, always ta also taking from the poor. I think this is Robert's story. I think I'm stealing Robert's story, and that's why he likes it right now. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know, this city has a dark side. Hmm. I think this is... <laughs> this is this is probably Charlie Tan's story. For the record, Charlie Tan is a charlatan. If you put the name together, it spells out the entire story. <laughs> now, about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all that. Wait. Mm -hmm. Yes? Who was the famous ghost hunter? Hey. Well, I don't like to name drop, but George Mathers. <gasps> Georgia Mathers? She she's a legend. You know her? Yeah. Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgia. Hey. Anyway, we were in Maple Bay, investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called wailing watchman. Wailing ghost of the wharfman. Oh. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just Lucian. He lives down the street. The Dover ghost. Man. You tell him, Loomis. I... So there I was, just walking back to my hotel. A long day of... Working a couple of short cons. Classic pigeon drop scam. Pulling up failures for a rip deal. I'm just mostly getting hurts. I need more eggplants. Um... <laughs> gonna steal baby probably would have made me rich 
found myself walking past this very cemetery. Now, I was never a very superstitious man. Something seemed off. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. Thank God you did. George and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. First, things were pretty normal. But after about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Huh? Run. Hey. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just, I just knew we weren't alone. I started to hear this faint, distant, scraping noise, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it. Someone, something, grabbed my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when that thing started dragging me. Wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew no place, this is no place where I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across by... God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glanced at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. Arms are too long, its eyes glow red, it was like a walking shadow. This is terrible, but we're so good at this. This is a problem, y'all. What I do, what any good person would do, I lunged for. Shoot, what was his fake name again? Daniel McSturgis. Daniel. You're doing good. We're doing really good with this, folks. Grabbed his hand and entered a tug of war with the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had God on my side. I should have said Bible selling. Would have been better sell. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket. And to this day, I can remember what passage it opened up to. I don't know. Leviticus? I feel like Leviticus. But Leviticus feels right on this one. And if thy oblation be a meat offering bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. Not exactly relevant, but true. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse out from. Horrifying growl. I, I, that was at least a neutral answer. We're good. The entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground exhausted. We were both covered in blood. That damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his pack. Sir! I, at least we're getting shirtless boys this time, but like, ugh. Oh. Mm. And that's how I got this scar. Oh. I followed George and Mathers to the ends of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room. But I had never, ever seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that. And neither was I. Watching what happened to Dor Daniel and Georgia shook my faith. But I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend. We've been brothers ever since. <laughs> the tour group gives a round of applause as we, as we share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell cologne on his neck. Wow. Robert cleans up real good. I find myself lingering a little too long in the hug. What does he smell like? Please tell me. The tour guide seems to have bought it. He's even wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor to be able to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. Paranormal... Oh, God. Paranormal Excursions of the Supernatural Ice Road tr Ghost Truckers. Bro's Guide to the Hottest Ghost. No. Okay, I'm nailing it. We're doing good. We're doing okay. There's there is hope for a happy ending at this one, guys. Oh, Robert has to suppress the laugh at that one. 
Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. Yes, free shirt, man. Tour God hands us the coveted shirts. He then slips us both his business card and leans in close. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model, please do not hesitate to contact me. That last one has me deeply concerned, Quinn. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. That was incredible. I really can't believe they bought all of that. Didn't know you had it in you, Parker. I mean, sorry, Dr. Loomis. Mm -hmm. That bit about the pocket Bible is aces, although giving the Dover ghost glowing red eyes is a little cliche. And the cube conspiracy theory bit wasn't hey. all part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house, Smoochies. Got my shirt. I am getting the one other thing I came here for tonight, sir, which is Smoochies. Oh. Wanna have a drink? Heck yes. Is that even a question? Robert, how long have you known me for? Do you really do you, do you really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend and accomplice, Dr. Robert Bobbert Small? Oh. You ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins, both of them. Hey. Then you can expect an Andrew call from my orthopedist in the morning. Ah. Bobbert. <laughs> we'll take it. Take it. Robert just laughs and starts unlocking the door. My shins live to die another day. Oh. Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around on the ghost tour. I don't know. It's hard to read. Well, I'm thinking I hear claw. <gasps> the puppy. The guy's the puppy. Oh, God. It's his pit bull. It's going to be great. It's going to be so good. It's not a pity. Although, I'd still be okay if it was a pity. Betsy, hey, be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. Is <laughs> the dorky dog? I'm so excited, Betsy. I love this dumb mutt. Like, look at those derpy eyes. I'm so happy. Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He pats her on the head. That's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. Betsy, you're not a pit bull. And you weren't taken by the Dover ghost? Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that. Ain't your girl. Ooh. <gasps> I love her. I just keep a large picture. I just keep a picture of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies. Comedic emergencies. We make our way to the living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, this place is amazing. There are sleek modern appliances through the room, big flat screen TV, shelves upon shelves of DVDs. I guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both glass, glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked counter bar. <laughs> from a well-stocked bar in the corner. While Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions because she is a delightful, adorable child and I love her. So how did you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You've trained me too well. <laughs> you do have a daughter. I feel like that's like the one person. Yeah, protect Betsy at all costs. I want to know about your daughter. Oh no, what if? My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and we went to the hospital. What happened to your daughter, though? I... Not a very interesting story. Never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Oh. That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. How old is she? 25, 26. Oh! Older. Moved out then. Long gone. Does she live around here? No, Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine. Makes buckets, though. Something seems really serious. We should press him about this. I want to know more. You like Santana? Mm -hmm. Great. Then takes a seat on the couch next to me. Suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Yeah, no, he... You know what? Looks great. Doing great for his age. Hey, are you alright? Mm -hmm. It's probably like nearly 50, actually. Depending on what age he had a uh, bow at. There is no leaning into this with these boys today. There is no... Yo, 
Okay, but no, but if his daughter's 25, like, he would have had to have had her when he was 20. But also, we are hitting Smooch Town real fast. Oh, my life. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since we hit the thirsty meter, okay? Robert leans in and smooches me, the taste of whiskey burning my lips. I am surprised at first because that came out of left field, but we are not arguing. It could have been. You're not wrong. It could have been when he was, like, 18 or something. But he looks amazing. Um, I'm surprised at first, but slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. Uh, you just needed me to smooch you better. I mean, sir, all you had to do was start. I can't say anything at best managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, kissing me harder. Damn, we are going in strong here. Pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites it, bites it lightly, sliding a hand under my shirt. This is moving faster than Craig, and I thought Craig was moving fast. Oh, my life. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. I just wait. It's not that. Robert bites down, and I have to stifle a moan. Stop. There is so much smut in this. Jesus. I'm here for it, but also, nobody, no, no, I'm more than okay with the biting. Some things that, you are clearly avoiding it and you are, this high sex drive thing is an emotional, it's, it's a trauma response, Robert. You are having a trauma response and I'm going to regret calling you out on this, but we, we stand healthy relationships in this household. So yeah, something besides the obvious is up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired, not a big deal. Listen, I want this as badly as you do. Oh boy, do we. But I know something's wrong. I need to make sure you're okay. Robert yeah. stares at the ground. You don't know me that well, Parker. I'm not a good person. Spent my whole life only taking and taking and taking. And now here I am, an old, broken man, sitting on top of everything I've ever taken alone. But I want to know you. You don't need to keep hiding behind trauma responses, sir. What happened to you? I am clearly somebody who has been in therapy for nearly three years. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. That's why you're freaking out. You screwed up there. You regret it. And now you're panicking. Are you... I'm sorry, but is this a bet? It's not a bet. No. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four months? Years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus. Robert, what happened between you two? Robert? You're gonna have to talk about it. Fine. Good. Good boy! You get a smooch for every time you tell me something that you don't want to talk about, okay? We are going to reward this with positive- using positive reinforcement on this one, okay? Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. I always did. Things just got in the way. Before I knew it, she was leaving for college wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn- Marilyn and I moved out here to settle down. I thought- we thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. The temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. Oh, jeez. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us. I didn't know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter, too. Emotional damage. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy that I ruined my only real chance of happiness. Now my wife is dead and my daughter hates me. And then I convinced myself that this... Oh, we're bit gesturing vaguely at me. I was going to make me happy. 
Okay, sir, for one, I can make you very happy. But we need honesty. Honest communication is what makes the, that's what makes it work, baby. I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is to. No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband and now I'm even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I just, I know I'm going to fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I, yes, you should, sir. Puts his head. Oh, we're telling you what you need to hear, sir. Nothing is going to change until unless you do. <laughs> Which is exceptionally good advice, for the record. <laughs> there are a lot of things in my life that I regret. That I wish I could take back or do over. And it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I can do is... And what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day. And patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. And you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right. I don't know you that well. But you have the same capacity for good that we all have, and I know you can find it. Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. It's gonna be okay. No, you should just smooch him. He can't, he can't argue if we're smooching. People can't argue. There's so many feels. Not okay. I thought I was gonna have some lighthearted smoochy times. Turns out I only get that with Damien. Um, which is why he was the best choice and the first choice. I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. You can't escape me. <laughs> he buries his head into my shoulder, hugging me back. Good. It's going to be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair, which is probably nice and soft right now because he showered. He shudders, then sobs, and I realize he's crying. <laughs> Baby? Thank you. We stay there for a while holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. Should have texted my daughter. <laughs> I need to know how this goes. Oh, my heart. <sighs> only an Only an A? Only an A? I'm going to be so upset. So upset. <sighs> Whew, okay. As we know, we're going to skip through a good chunk of this. I'm always going to answer the thuds. Uh -huh. Okay. Hello, boys. Surprise! Everybody's here! Okay. I love Pablo. You're pretty great. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink, right? And I know you're smart enough not to drink until your legal age. Uh-huh. But hypothetically, if you were to drink, I would behoove you to a drink a glass of water between rounds. Ugh. Got it. Hypothetically. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be just fine. <laughs> I like that she's giving her advice. Mm. Now let me tell you about how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Ugh. Relax, it's a myth. Supposedly I haven't tested this out. Mommy, I'm sorry, Ma No longer going after Stranger Danger, going after his daughter. BRB, see you guys later. Whew. I am not surprised. That has to be her. But also, hi. Whew. Yeah, no, that deserves the all caps in the thirsty. I, uh, hmm, hmm. Hi, darling. You're stunning. Whew. I better get a happy ending, or at least I better get her number. Either way. 
Oh, I should go say hi. Yep. Hi. I don't think we've met, but I would like to. Oh, we've met years ago. And I'm here for my revenge. You are definitely Robert's daughter. Holy shit. You're Robert's kid. <laughs> Spot on. I guess that makes you Parker, huh? Yeah, no, we need to... Oh. Nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there'd be free food, so that's kind of hard to pass up. I mean, girl after my own heart here. Look, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a second? My old man's a real close book, you know? Me and him, we've got a long way to go. Don't erase decades of... <laughs> Thanks, Katzy, for also redeeming the hydrate. Oh, my chat is just redeeming all the channel points because... Hydrate, we're gonna do this one. Actually, liquid's in there. Oh, my life. Can you blame me? Can you blame me? Are you looking at the same screen as me right now? You cannot fault me for this. Whew, I'm good, I swear. Huh, putting the, putting the panic back in pansexual. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be fine, I swear. But also, I cannot, in fact, fault you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you don't erase decades of neglect in a week. It's true. Thank good. As you should. <laughs> but I'm sure you can get tired. But you sure can get tired of staying angry about it. Ooh, words are not happening. A kind of bitterness it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better. A, a lot better. Between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you. He talks about me? Oh, that's so good. I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else. Or else what? I'm kidding. Or am I? You really are his daughter. Did he just, like, train you? Were the, okay, were the, like, your first words. Was it a sentence? Was it, was it a con? Was it a full... Like, I start wondering here. I don't know why I'm like this. <laughs> I say the thing, same thing, babe. Don't worry. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. Aww. And just everything about you. Thanks. I like your jacket. Oh my god, and she's queer too. This is my favorite. Oh no, I love her. <laughs> mm, here for this. My girlfriend collects pins too. Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter, Val. Oh, nice meeting you. I hear you're a photographer. An aspiring photographer. I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Yeah. Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Oh, yeah! <gasps> she works for a media outlet or something like that, doesn't she? This is great for my daughter! Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, yeah, nepotism, but also... If I could hook up my baby, I'm going to. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Yes! Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Ah, Mary, have you not met her yet? Excellent. You two will get along fine. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She touched my hand. I know, baby. Oh, uh, you just networked for the first time. I'm so proud of you. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projection, stock market, synergy. Yeah, get into them stonks. While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta go keep this party going. Catch around, pops. That was good. Okay, I'm not sitting through Brian's insults at me again. Craig, no. I haven't forgiven you for friend zoning me. Hey. Ah, yes, okay. Pew pew! Pew pew! Oh. Don't give me that. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I missed Amy and Anushin. Sorry, boys. Okay, as the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. Man, oh, okay, okay, this is good, this is good. Because in the good ending with Damien, we dealt with father-daughter stuff first. Hmm. And then I got my happy ending. Like, it ended with happy ending. With Craig, I dealt with heartbreak. 
first. Anyway, so we know what this is. La 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 la. Are we ready, friends? Pew pew! pew, pew! <laughs> I need a good ending. Give it to me here. Give it to me, Robert. Take a seat next to us as uh, text to seat to Robert as last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Uh, not as good as you can cook, but I'll take it. So, I had a chance to talk to Val. Hi. She physically threatened you? Twice. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. So proud of you, buddy. Yeah. You know, every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits, but lately it's gotten a little easier. Uh. Thanks for talking some sense to me. It's hard to get th things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped. I'm glad. Oh. I like you. I like you a lot. Well, yeah, the smoochies and some other parts of you were saying that. I was just better. I was more concerned about you. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. Smoochies! He takes my hand in his. Uh, You're special to me. I have some stuff I need to work on emotionally before I... I mean, that's fair. I want you to go see a therapist. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I think what you need right now is a friend, and I'm very happy to be that for you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, when it includes smoochies, you know where to find me. Let's hunt ghosts sometime. I would love that. I put my head on the shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizons together. <sighs> Guys. Okay, time to find out if we get the pretty picture. That's all this has been tonight is just emotional damage. Like... Nope, that's still the photo with her. Fuck! Yes! There we go! That means I got the good ending! That means we're good! That means future relationship with Stranger Danger, who is no longer a stranger! Oh, this is- this is the- we just, we live at Heartbreak Hotel. Yes, not wrong. But this is still a good ending. This is still the good ending. Unlike Craig, this is still a step up. This is friend zone with potential for more once we get this boy a proper therapist. Also, look at Betsy. She's adorable. So I will accept this. I am still heartbroken. But I will accept this. Look at Betsy, but also look at the little wooden thing. It's a bumper. That is a very deep V. It is a very deep V. Which, you know what that means? It means we gonna get some. So it'll be fine. Um, so we're gonna leave Dream Daddy there. Oh my god. And we're gonna do the maze as the last final thing of today. Uh, provided H-Dog is ready to um, hurt me. More than I already have been emotionally today. Um, Cause you know, who doesn't like a little bit of pain? Apparently, I love pain today. This has been emotional. Guys, I didn't sign up for this emotional damage. I didn't sign up for any emotional damage, truth be told. But you know what I mean. Okay, happy birthday, Eric. I hope you have a wonderful, magical birthday. I hope you had a good time. And we will, I will see you later, sir. Okay, we are just gonna get... The code from H-Dog as we load up 
The stew, the stew valley, the stew valley. Yeah, no. Uh, catch the VOD. I might just try to see if I can't clip how this goes uh, so we can see my suffering. But, you know, as we do, as we do. And we are going to get everything organized. Um, we are doing the do. There we go. Okay. It's been a minute since I've looked at this. Uh, we don't need this. We want co-op. I went to the wrong area. We're fine. We're fine. I know what I'm doing. All right. Who's ready for me to go through some pain? Because we haven't had enough damage done to me today. What is possibly going to go wrong here? Everything is about to go wrong. Everything. Maze, 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 maze. Stardew, baby! This is gonna hurt me, I'm sure. I'm scared. Nice hat, H Dog. Hey, friend. What on earth? Is this the beginning of the maze? That start? Okay. How much? <laughs> I, I, oh my God. Okay, welcome to the maze. It's amazing. It's a maze out of maze. I get it. I understand. H dog musk. I don't even know what the anticipated end of this is. Oh, that's a dead end. What am I trying to find? Do I get any hints? I don't know where I'm going. Am I just trying to escape? What is even escape at this point? <laughs> oh no, he left the little buddy. I don't care about your stupid town fair right now. I got a maze. Just a couple mil. You know, just a just a little bit. Just a little bit of mil. Um. If you collect the Oh! Wait, what? <laughs> Hold up! Okay, so I gotta collect the plushies. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So I gotta go back to that one that I did find. <laughs> Sorry, this suddenly has real life implications, y'all. Got very serious now. Nope, I Probably cheating if I do it that way, right? No, there's a way to get over to that one. Ooh, there's something hiding right there. Okay. I did not actually previously get to you. I just said seen you. Is there... I feel like that's just jack-o'-lantern. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna... We got this. What the heck is there? I don't know if... The problem is they are probably all hiding in here too. Oh, no, those just have shorts. That looks like uh, that thing. Hello, puppy. How many things do you have blocking the way? I take it moving things, like choosing to move things is cheating, right? Unless they are, unless those are, okay, no, I'm, I... am I supposed to collect the things that are like stopping me from getting any further? Yes, that's cheating. Okay, cool. Ha ha ha. Ha ha, that's one. Two. Okay, I got two. 
So far, so good. That's the two that were in this area. There's eight of these. What the fuck? Oh, nope. That doesn't take me anywhere, really. Okay, just the, I just need to grab... Are any of them, like, are any of them... Would I not be sure that they are Juminos because they're like, I can't see them entirely? Or are they all very clearly Juminos? Or is that part of the game here where I don't know if they're hiding? All my life. There's four in section one and four in section two. Where? Okay, so I found two of them. Oh my god, this is this is like that time you and I went through a corn maze. Who? Hello, hello. You are not who I'm looking for. Oh, hello, pupper. Is this section two? Am I about to enter section two? I feel like this should be color coded. Good boy. Oh, no, sunflowers. Sunflowers are section two, I'm assuming. Okay, well, there's still... Okay, so there's two more that I have not been able to find. <laughs> there's only four. There's, no, there's not eight. Okay, so then I found the two for the first section. I'm in round two. Holy crap. Okay, found another one. Two in each section. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Is there an exit afterwards? Or do I just need to, like, fall asleep in here? I forgot to go to the cinema in Catmore. It's fair. Oh, my God. The sunflowers are adorable, though. I actually love this as a tactic. Do, 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 do. There. Is that the exit? Did I just go through the exit? Jesus. Or is this part of the maze? Jesus Christ. I don't know what. Holy God, what is this woman? For the record, no, I can't go anywhere else. I can only follow along these trails. Um, is the last one in the center there? I'm hoping so. Otherwise, this is a very long journey. Somebody help me. Oh my god, this keeps going. Invisimaze! Yeah, that's impressive as hell. Oh my god, to go back out afterwards. We're gonna see what's in this chest. Motherfucking shorts. This is brutal. I have to go back. That was a waste. That was absolutely pointless. I did that for no discernible reason. It just killed, it killed time. And I still have one little buddy Jumino that I gotta go find. That I gotta go rescue. And I gotta save. There's so many of those freaking jack-o'-lanterns which keep messing with me and I keep not being sure. And it's gonna get dark soon. I only have, I only have a few hours. I only have so many hours to finish this. Oh, but there is, there is an exit. I see what you mean. That is a different one though altogether. Oh, if I'd actually gone that way, I would've gotten to H Dog. But I don't have the other dude yet. So I can't go to H Dog yet, but I have found the beginning of the end. I think. Maybe I'm crazy. Okay, so I think this is the one that leads towards H Dog then. And that, oh. What the heck? Now there's fog. Also, I couldn't go any further on that one. 
It's about to get real weird. Where, oh where, if I was the last human, oh where would I be? There! Found him! Okay, 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 okay. Cool. Got this far. Nope, can't do that far. Hard. Okay, there is, there is an exit. I just gotta find my way out now, guys. What do we think? Do we think, am I gonna survive? I don't know. That was the wrong way. This is insane. I do like the task of um, having to find something in the maze, though. That part's really fun. Um, and very reminiscent of uh, that time, what I think inspired a lot of this, which was us going to a place that totally had a corn maze. Um, the frick, how do I get back over there? I can do this. I can do this. We can do this. We are smart, resourceful, reasonable, and not prone to anger or lashing out whatsoever. Am I supposed to be able to go up here? Because it feels like I should, but I can't. Why can't I go there? Because that's the path that leads to you. I just want to get to you, baby. Like, I'm not crazy. Because that would be the one that leads to you. Is there any... I'm just taking this pathway so I can see. Yeah, so that path should lead to you. That path would go there. But I can't get to that path. Is that the exit? Or am I crazy? H dog, am I insane for thinking that this is the way out? Yeah, which should be this pathway then, but I can't seem to move forward past this pathway. Is there, a, am I being an idiot and there's totally a different way to get to where you are? Because I know it's not getting to the center. <laughs> I just want to escape. I just want to get out. You are at the exit. There is a way. It's just not the way that I'm doing this. How the hell? Like, as I'm assuming, I'm aware it's getting late. I'm going to fall asleep on this thing. What happens if I fall asleep on your maze? Rude. Rude. I don't know how to get there. Boo! I'm probably going to fail then. That's unfortunate. Oh! <gasps> no, I'm going to make it! I'm going to make it after all! I'm going to make it, guys! I'm going to do it! <laughs> Freedom! I win! I win! I'm here. Taking your giant Jumino plush. Where's my bedroom? I did it! I win!
That last part was so tricky, H Dog. You can take these out afterwards. I don't care. I'm just being a jerk right now. Oh my god. Okay. H Dog, that was intense, y'all. <laughs> Maze 4.0 will destroy you, though. I, oh, God. That one nearly destroyed me. That was dangerous, yo. Oh, mama. I'm really glad I had the thought process to try to figure out how to cheat across the thing. Invisible. I have no idea how you did that. I have zero clue, man. That was good, though. That was impressive. Okay. Um, and on that absolutely horrifying note i'm gonna go order myself some noodles because i earned that shit <laughs> oh my god i'm still like oh also now i'm really hungry <laughs> it wasn't even literally running through that maze okay today's been a day but we ended on some wins here we ended on some very very strong wins and also a lot of heartbreak uh but thank you guys for being here we will pick up with something tomorrow um we might do maybe tomorrow will be the last day of dream daddy and we'll finish out at least hugo and joseph maybe matt matt's not been going so hot though so i don't know if i can do that two testers passed out on that one? Oh yeah i win i feel really proud actually i did really good um, so we'll, we'll do maze 4.0 at some point. We'll see if we can finish out a bit more on Dream Daddy tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna go emotionally cry because, you know, it was one of those, it was one of those days. Um, but yeah, so we'll leave it there for today. Thank you guys for being here. Much love, much rar, and I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, also, do exclamation point rar in chat, actually, because it might, it should do the thing. Actually, no, it has to be on that one. But, in theory. I'll see if this works. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, I gotta fix my overlays. I gotta fix my overlays. Why? You should be up top. You should be there. Why isn't it working? Okay. I gotta fix all my commands for next time. That is apparently what I have to do. But that is a-okay. I will deal with that another time. Uh, bye, guys. Much love. Much rare. All things fixed, including my hurt tomorrow. <laughs>